This first game on the list is kind of a weird one. I'm putting this game as number five on the list because it's kind of in limbo hell, if you can even call it that. The last trailer we got was actually from two years ago, and I don't think there's been any updates since. At this point, everybody just thinks it's a glorified tech demo. They actually do have a Steam page, and if we go there, it says this about the game. Brace yourself for an intense body horror with an advanced dismemberment system, dynamic enemy behavior, complex weapon mechanics, an immersive interactive world, and strategic survival and crafting, all contributing to an unforgettable visceral journey into despair. Alright, I'm sold. I really do hope this game sees the light of day eventually. What I really like about this game is the enemy design. They remind me so much of movies like The Thing and The Void or The Fly, just that extreme body horror that Dead Space really leaned heavy into. I love the way the zombies look contaminated and bloated and they just shuffle towards you almost in complete silence. The whole environment just oozes with atmosphere and looks so dirty and grungy. I just want to grab my shotgun, jump in and start blasting things. So the next game I want to talk about is Slitterhead. Not a whole lot is known about this game except Kichiro Toyama is involved and he worked on Silent Hill and the original Siren game. If you've played those games, and I'm pretty sure everybody has, you know they're based mostly around psychological horror. This is why Slitterhead is kind of interesting because it's marketed as an action adventure game. I feel like there's going to be some detective work too as you roam around the city and try to figure out which humans are actually human. To be honest, this game could totally flunk, but I'm kind of interested. If you told me this next game was going to happen, I never would have believed you in a million years. Because it's The Thing. Yeah, The Thing. You know that game that didn't really do that well back in the day, but kind of became a cult classic? And I'm not even shitting on this game at all. I used to play this game all the time. It's just nobody even knows about this game, and nobody even knew about it back then, so I don't understand why they're making a remastered version of it. But fuck yeah. The game was actually pretty creepy back in the day and genuinely had some cool mechanics to it. But it also had a lot of jank, so they'd actually have to rebuild the whole system from the ground up and not just throw a coat of paint on it. If they actually put a lot of love into this project, it could be something special. So the next game that I think looks really cool is The Forever Winter. It's a co-op squad based tactical shooter, but the cool spin on this is it's got horror elements attached to it, so I'm into it of course. I don't know what the hell is going on in the trailer or what the world is about, but there's giant evil looking robots and that's cool. The loadout system looks similar to Escape from Tarkov which has me interested, and the music for the trailer is pretty badass, so let's keep a watchful eye on this one. And the number one game that I'm most excited for that comes out in September, Stalker 2. I don't know if anybody watching these videos were original Stalker heads. Okay, sounds weird when I say it like that, but the original games, they were actually pretty fun and they still hold up well. They actually just put out a remaster of all three games on consoles. I don't know how well they actually run or if they're actually good, but they could be worth checking out. The reason I'm so excited for the second game is because the first games had such expansive lore and there was always new things to find and the whole world was just so fleshed out. I love games where you can just wander around for hours avoiding what you're supposed to be doing. You almost have more fun doing all the side stuff than the actual main missions in the game. One of the craziest things about this game is literally in the middle of making it there was a war that broke out in Ukraine. I found a video of the team explaining what that was like and I'm going to play it for you guys because I found it quite interesting and unique. This Работа, идеи, она не останавливалась. Три месяца назад началась война России с Украиной. Шок от рабочий день начинается в тревоге. Сейчас сын на острове. Мы бежим в укрытие. Это переноска для моего кота, который загинул еще в первый тиждень войны. Выходишь вечером, сирена. Выходишь днем, сирена. Днем еще работать надо. Поэтому особо не выйдешь, а вечером все время вот так. 
це моє робоче місце. Вже третій місяць я живу і працюю в коридорі. Зі мною живе однокий пес, врятований з-під обстрілу Хостомелі. Зараз мені важко писати квести про війну, коли вона йде навколо. Так працює в переривах між сиренами і волонтерськими задачами. Світ ще побачить, наскільки в нас класна культура і в тому числі наскільки класні ігри ми можемо робити. Мене звати Олександр. Я являюсь сотрудником компании ЖСК. Я смотрю их. С начала боевых действий а, была потеряна связь с моими родными и близкими. И это непередаваемое ужасное чувство, когда ты не знаешь, живы они или нет. Я Дмитрий Ясенев, разрубник сталкера. Ніколи не міг уявити, що в 21 столітті в центрі Європи може статися повномасштабна війна. Я Олексій Іванов, ком'юніті менеджер проєкту «Станкер-2». І зброю в руках захищаю свою країну від російської агресії. Привіт, я Макс, наративний дизайнер гри «Станкер-2». Після перемоги я до неї повернуся. Побачимось на релізі. Слава Україні!